It's another position preview day on Lockdown Guardians. We are talking about a position that could use a little bit of love, and they would do anything to get it. We're talking about the 2024 Guardians outfield. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. But they won't do that, Justin. They won't do that. Uh, hello and welcome to the show today. The wrong artist. Uh, today, <laughs> today's, the wrong uh, artist. <laughs> today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy for it. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown MLB. Use the code all lowercase lockdown MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. And I'm just going to say little COA here. Prize Picks is great. I know you can't use them in Ohio. That's only 80% of our listenership. There is 20%. And don't begrudge us anyone who wants to sponsor us. So we know it doesn't work in Ohio. But we, we have listeners Give all over the world. Germany is our third highest country. Canada is almost 10% of our listenership. So hey, um, have yeah, fun, Canada. You know, I, I don't know how, ga- how it works in other places. But uh, yeah, prize picks. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, can we, I feel like just talking about this team in Arizona. Like I want to have a hazmat suit. Maybe I'll bring back the old masks. Uh, I'm going to just sit here in a bubble with bleach around me. What is going on? <laughs> well, Austin Hedges uh, took the brunt of it. He collided with somebody back at the complex, and he was a late scratch. But it sounds like, according to Mandy Bell and Stephen Vogt, he just has a, a bruise by his eye, so he should be okay. But uh, once again, we've hit by uh, this viral illness that's going around in Arizona, so it's knocked out. Everybody so far at this point, now it's second day for Gabby Arias. Well, Brennan, Xavier Curry, and Ben Lively have it. Fry just got over it. Josh Naylor's had it. Miles Straw is out with it for like eight days or whatever. So it's it's going around. I don't know. There needs to be some, some sanitization going on down in, down in Goodyear. I'm glad I didn't come back with anything. I'm glad I didn't even see the major leaguers practice. I almost saw the minor leaguers so far. I don't know anybody. If you had, you'd be dead. Let's be honest. That's what we're seeing. It's just, you know. Not me. I don't get, I'm not kind of what I, I, I take care of my, uh, my, uh, medications and my, my regular checkups and all that. Anyway, we're talking about the outfield. That was the artist, by the way, if you missed that. Jeff. Oh, I did miss it. The outfield, your love. Wow. No, I mean, I, that was- I, I mean, I know the song. I, I've got it somewhere. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I just, not me, uh, <laughs> No, I went with the meat love there because that felt more like the setup. <laughs> so, Isn't it like uh, that... someone's like Kelsey's far away. No, that's usually Josie is not I'm just going through far away. Far away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who needs to talk about the outfield? This will out. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the band, the outfield for the rest of the show. Yeah, name three members. Put them below better, in the comments. Is it better than the Guardians outfield? Is the band, the outfield, better than the Guardians outfield? Probably most two one six five seven eight. No, oh, we don't do that here. Sorry. <laughs> um, that, is it sad so, that like I immediately knew the rest of that number when you started saying it? <laughs> well, there's multiple. You could have you could have gone there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we can you know write in Sharpie. I think that Stephen Kwan in left field. You feel good about him. Um. You know, I know a lot of people talk, talk about like, moving him. I think the whole thing is the problem with moving Kwan is half of his value is his defensive value in left field. So if you move him you're subtracting his value to put him somewhere. So I just want to say that, um, you know, I had a lot of questions today about specifically why not put Quan in center and Freeman in left uh, because Quan's great. Don't break what's broken. And so far Freeman's all right. Yeah. We'll talk about Freeman a little bit later. Yeah. You could kind of pencil in Quan for, you know, a 270 to 290, 300 average, maybe. He's going to be league average. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's going to hit have a 100 WRC plus. He's going to play Gold Glove defense. He'll probably steal 20 bases. He'll get on base, you know, 340, 345, and you know he'll still, yeah, he'll steal some bases, he'll hit like five homers, like he did last year. Um, just solid. It's a great guy to have. It's a great piece to have. We talked all off season about how the Guardians needed to come away though with a better outfit of Stephen Kwan, and that wasn't a knock on Stephen Kwan. It's just that the guy we're talking about here. Is a nice leadoff hitter. I'd really actually like to see Stephen Quan hit ninth, if I'm being honest. I know he's a good player. Yes, on a good team, he's probably a ninth hitter. 
Yeah, and if he's your second best outfielder in terms of offense, that's great. Um, if he's third, obviously your your outfield's really good. But if he, I would just like to see the Guardians have one outfielder better than Stephen Kwan. Um, and I know it seems like we're not going to talk about Kwan a lot, and that's like a you know a knock on him, but it's not. It's because you know he's kind of a plug and play you guy. Set him he and is, forget him. Yeah, he's the old uh, the Ronco uh, chicken roaster that I used to see on your TV when you uh, weren't watching Maury when you were sick on uh from school at home during your school days but yeah he's he's just you put him out there in left field for now you put him at lead off and you expect consistent results he did the splits that even out last year i know we talked a little bit last year about how his splits were being kind of weird but they did even out so um he's neutral against everybody he does he hits for a little more pop against right handers but not anything significant i mean his his power is is you know a, a 35 a 30 at best it's it's I think his career high will be and will be ten home runs like in a season. I think that's the max he'll get to, and that would be a good season for him. The real question is, it's Stephen Kwan and whoever the heck is standing next to him. And there's a whole chunk of options. Where do you where do you want to start with these options, Jeff? Because this is just the, the the list of guys that are on the forty or that are you know adjacent to the major leagues and um, might have opportunities in front of them in twenty twenty four. Who do you want to start with? Could be anybody. Um... You know, I, I should we we go with Brennan, who's having a good spring, who you and I both thought would nail down a position a year ago. I do think that Brennan still has a good chance. I mean, we saw this organization. I know everybody got mad about the Nolan Jones trade. And look, if they had Nolan Jones, I would say the same thing about him that we're saying about Quan. Not necessarily as consistent, but someone you can put in the outfield and just be good about and not worry about things so much. Um, but I, I think the, the Nolan Jones trade and, you know, the Oscar Gonzalez thing was weird. And, you know, you and I both think that that was going to fall like a ton of bricks at some point. And it did. He's not even on the Yankees 40 anymore, by the way, um, for those who are missing that. But yeah, I think it was much, as much about Will Brennan as it was about anybody else. This team was pretty confident. There were people in the front office that we've heard that are really high on Will Brennan, higher than they were on. George Valera. And I don't know if some of that's availability because, you know, we know Valera is going to be out for quite a bit with that hamstring, but people like Will Brennan. He, you know, has a potential to be a plus defensive outfielder. He already is. He could play some center. He could play all three outfield spots. Got a great arm. Obviously has speed. Hit like crazy in the minors. I, I still think there's a chance that he grabs at least a platoon share of right field and he can also fill in the other two spots. Yeah, I mean that's definitely the the hope. It's like his his defensive numbers were as strong as uh you know Quan's were a year ago. If he Pretty can close. just get to, if if we can get him to just being close offensively to league average, he's a, you got a similar uh you got a similar pathway to success with him. Yeah, I mean, I, is he going to be a, a, a right field slugger? Like, yeah, you know, I know people are going to say need a twenty home run right handed hitter in right in right field. No, you just need someone who can hit. Handedness doesn't matter. You need someone who can go out there and put up for right now, one, like a 100 WRC plus. Anything after that is bonus, considering where this outfield has been. Let's just take some steps in the right direction and not have the worst outfield in baseball. Um, I still think Brennan's a good player. I do believe in him. Is he probably a platoon bat? Maybe. I, you know, he got away from what do, he does well, which is, you know, he's a patient hitter. He makes a lot of contact. I think he got too contact happy last year and was was trying to put the ban on everything. And I think he just needs to be more patient. I think if he adds, if he goes out and he works the count a little bit more, I think he'll be just fine. I think it just got away from him last year. He, he kind of got Oscar Gonzalez syndrome. And if he can repair that, I still believe in him. And, you know, as you've mentioned before, I think we both talked about this. I think the guardians have a potentially good right fielder in a combination of Will Brennan and Ramon Laureano. Like remember how good people talked about how the platoon of Lonnie Chisnall and Brandon Geyer were like, it was pretty much a, a above average bat when you combine the two in a platoon. I could see a similar situation between Will Brennan and Ramon Laureano. I think that's a really good ad, and he's also having a very good spring. Yeah, I do feel like at the start of the year, it's probably, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Laureano and center and Brennan and Wright along with Quan. Like, there's part of me that thinks, like, I, I know, um, I know we have Freeman getting reps and there's other people getting reps, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if at the end of the day, they go with some of the experience to start and then slowly work in the other players. Um, and then as guys 
either succeed or don't succeed. Maybe we move closer to that platoon. All right. We still got to talk about Estevan Florio, Miles Straw. You know, we mentioned Valera. You mentioned Freeman. There's the Davis and De Los Santos situation. We still have Rodriguez and Noel. And there's also that guy named Chase Lauder. Everyone's super excited about. So all those outfield options still coming up here on Lock on Guardians. Before we get to those outfield players, you can maybe put some money down on over-unders or some stats on them on prize picks uh, later this year. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. It's almost tournament season for the fight for the playoff at home court. No shortage of high stakes and basketball moments this month for sure, as we've been talking about. Get in on the excitement with prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 into 1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. You know, if you believe that Will Brennan is going to hit a couple of home runs, maybe you think that Ramon Laureano is facing a lefty. He's going to collect a couple of hits, pick more or less on their stats. Super easy this year. So uh, give that a try when baseball season comes around download the app today and use our code lockdown mlb for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. pick more pick less it is that easy with price picks all right so the other rest of the outfielders that we've talked about here I know you've been mentioning about how you think Cleveland's going to give Estevan Florial a chance to make the open day roster because of the Cody Morris trade. I'm just kind of wondering, like, okay, you've got Quan for sure. Freeman's going to bounce between, you know, the outfield and, and some infield spots. You for sure going to have Ramon Laureano and Straw on the roster. So that's four guys. That probably pushes – if you if, if Florial's on the roster and you've got Laureano and you've got Quan and you've got Straw because of the money – and you're going to keep Freeman, who can bounce it around. You're kind of putting Will Benson or Will Benson, Will Brennan, in AAA if if Florial's making this roster. No, how how can they both fit? Um. Well, I mean, I think you're looking at a bench that's Freeman Fry because um, they're going to take eight relievers. Don't you know? Make sure. Yeah. No, I know your bench is Freeman Fry that. Hedges, and then Florial and, and Devison gets sent away because um, Florial does have some experience at first base as well in his minor league career. Really? So you have that. I, oh. I, I recall at points that he had it. I'll double check, but I believe he also had some reps. Um, I don't remember I'll pull that it up now. now, but that's what I've, I've in my mind. I've had that thought. I could totally be wrong, but I think um... again, like spring is one of those things you work at and, and it's not necessarily, it, it shouldn't be a world shifter for you. So I don't see it, but yeah, I have a hard time with the idea of just dropping a guy, um, no, well, maybe he didn't. Maybe that was just in my head. Maybe it's just the idea that anyone can play first. But <laughs> uh, you know, tell if, him wash. If if you liked him enough to to get him, I have a hard time believing spring training is going to make you cut him. Uh, if if you went out and made that deal, this wasn't a deal. I mean, they could have probably waited and made that deal, and and possibly even paid less. Um, but they liked him enough to go out and get him. If you like a guy enough to go out and get him, are you really going to cut him based on? how someone looks in spring as we talked about like every year in spring training is you know hey Yu Chen Chang every year in spring training made people think he was going to be a starter and then the minute the season began he looked like a trip a quad a guy you was a great person I wish he had been more successful it didn't happen Bobby Bradley would have great spring like a great spring at the end of the day you know what effect that has on the regular season nothing like it 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 yeah, you know, and Carlos Carrasco on the other side was awful every spring. Ryan um, Shaw was terrible every spring. <laughs> Jim Tomey couldn't hit until things warmed up. Like Jim Tomey, the reason he never made All Star games is because they're based on your first half. Uh, right. You know, he's one of those April guys was never who, kind to him. Yeah, him. So yeah, I think yeah. like if, if you liked him based on a full year's worth of data, nothing spring training does should change it. And if it is changing it, then like I don't know, then I got a problem because then you shouldn't have acquired him in the first place. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how that that plays out. I mean, he has not looked all that great this spring. He, when he hits the ball, he hits it hard, but you know, it's still a lot of swing and miss. And 
obviously he can go get it in center field, but Miles Straw can go get it in center field too. And and apparently Tyler Freeman can too, based on what we've seen. Although I'm not expecting Freeman to be a gold glove contender, but he also looks like he is going to be able to hold his own out there. The De Los Santos thing is interesting. I saw him a little bit in spring training in right field and I just, ugh, it was rough, but also again, I'm not going to knock the guy because he's 20 and he's never played the outfield before. So it, it's also one of those things that you can't, you know, look at him for two or three days in the outfield in March and say, well, this doesn't look great because he had a home run today and he looked terrible up until not that the home run mattered because it was off a 27 year old double A pitcher, but you know, just one of those things you can't judge on a couple of days. Yeah. I mean, again, straw is going to be there. We know, we know Loriano is going to be there because of money. We know Quan's going to be there. So that really leaves you with, you know, two outfield spots essentially. And if we think one of them is going to go to Florial, then you can keep Freeman because he's going to bounce back and forth between, you know, center and, and the infield when he needs to, that doesn't leave any room to will for Will Brennan for me. And um, I do think De Los Santos probably doesn't factor in. I don't know. I mean, can you imagine this bench, how weird this is going to be if you're keeping both Floriel and De Los Santos, because let's be honest, if they do that, there's no NRIs to make the team like you. How, no. what are you going to do to clear an NRI, a spot for like a, and, and I can't see how you, somebody. you do both of them. Um, you think it's one or the other. Then you have to have hedges and then it's like, okay, you got to have someone who, and then Freeman. So yeah, it, it, at that point it's like, okay, I guess Fry doesn't make the team if you go that way or Fry starts in the minors. I mean, there is a world where that I mean, does. They don't have you, anybody ticketed for triple a like it's dom nunez and brian lavastida in triple a that's your triple a yeah. catchers right now i don't know i don't see fry going the triple a i just don't i think he makes too much sense in this roster but no i know um, but i mean there is a world where they decide hey we we want to see what these guys can do a little bit longer or they try to like wait for a situation yeah, where maybe know you know is. but he's also 28 it, so i don't know it's weird yeah i think we can agree no, valera is not going to be out for, it's going to be out for no. a while uh, Rodriguez and Noel were never making this team. They have not had a great, neither of them has had a really great camp. I know Noel's put some stats up, but I think we're just putting Noel here because that's where, that's where if he ever were to get an opportunity, it's going to be outfield because it's not going to come at first between Naylor and Manzardo. Um, it's just, we don't think he can play the outfield. I, I have seen him with my own eyes. He can't play the outfield, but that's where he's going to break in if it ever happens for him because they don't have a spot for him. And then, We've all said multiple times over, Chase DeLauder is not making this roster out of spring training. We just, we don't think so. Um, but, you know, a couple months ago, if you asked me that I think DeLauder was going to make his debut in 2024, I said no. I'm I'm starting to go the other way on that. I'm starting to kind of soften on that stance. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a chance for him to debut this year. It's, it's a little bit of an uphill battle, but at this point, it's like, who's in front of him? Valera isn't ever healthy uh if brennan struggles again this year that won't be a hard pass if that's the case so. you know it, it's if brennan continues his struggles and we're entering more of the owen miller area of you know a contact profile where it's oh, not successful so sad Oof. um you know it, there's not a whole lot blocking the lotter the only thing that's blocking the lotter is the question can he hit velocity which is what we're hoping to see in double yeah. a can he hit good secondary offerings you know he's he's gotten a little bit rich on poor competition and uh, there are those who still doubt him. I mean, I, I think he'll be fine. Um, I don't think he's necessarily going to be a star. I think a lot of people think he's going to be, you know, a five tool center fielder. I, I don't think he's going to be a center fielder. And I think he's going to be just a, you know, a good above average player, but uh, there are those out there who I respect in the industry who think that he is just going to fall apart once he faces better competition. So yeah, I'm curious to see, um, I'm very curious to see what happens with him in double A. And I mean, they've cleared runway or, Hey, maybe trade some infielders and go out. Dodgers have some needs, right? Like let's, let's, let's the shortstop. Can't catch something. the Mookie bets. The short, you know, yeah. let's, let's, uh, I mean, heck Lux can't even hit the, the, from second base anymore. So they still yeah, need even more infielders. I mean, he's just, he's a mess <laughs> and a half. So yeah, let's, let's figure out, uh, you know, find the next out there that way. Maybe. Yeah, you make you make a good point because coming into the year, my whole thing was because Cleveland has talked about how they need to take more time with some of the prospects and they want to make sure they see these guys before they make a, a permanent decision on them. So my thought was, okay, with the water, like you've got Will Brennan and you've got, you know, Loriano is going to be there unless things really get bad. And 
The same with Straw, which they're not going to eat the money they owe, and it's only five million for Loriana or whatever. But it's it's over twenty million with Straw. That's the problem. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Valera is kind of taking himself out of the conversation without being being able to be on the field. So my thing was, you know, okay, let's say this whole Brennan experiment fails and, and doesn't work out, even though he's got a lot of fans in the front office. Um, you know, you've got to throw Valera out there. Well, he's not he healthy. Well, you got to throw Rodriguez out there because you put him on the forty. So it was like the order of operations we talked about a little bit yesterday, right? Like how, how is the lauder getting up there with all the guys in front of him that Cleveland says that they want to make sure they see before they make a decision on, but you know, I don't think unless one of these guys just really plays their rear end off and forces them. I mean, cause that, that it's settled. Then, you know, you're not going to bring the lauder up because well, Brennan's playing great or, or, you know, Jonathan Rodriguez gets a shot. He just blows everybody away, whatever. Um, but, like, I, if those guys don't play great, there's no reason to sit there and say, well, we've got to keep them in AAA and we've got to do this. And, you know, if, if the Lauder's crushing it in AA, like, like you said, there's a mixed bag on him, you know, scouting-wise. There are people that really believe in him being an everyday regular at the very least, and there's some people who think that, you know, the good velocity is going to really um, expose him. There's a, it's, a, it's a very polarizing player, which he was in the draft, truthfully. Um, but if he plays well in AA, there's no reason to – keep him down there if you have triple a guys like whenever valeria gets healthy and noel and rodriguez if they're not playing well in triple a you're not throwing in major leagues and there's no reason to sit there and and play them over to lauder if he deserves to be in triple a and if he plays well in triple a there's no reason not to put him in the majors at some point this year so i just think if you're going to, basically those other be, guys have to earn my point is those other to, guys have but to I, earn I think maybe the, the, the other way is if they're playing well Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick counterpoint. Interrupt, do what everyone loves. If they are playing well, they're not going to bring up the unknown. They might trade for an outfielder. If they're playing poorly, they're not going to bring him up and start his service time. So I think in as a way, a team. He, okay. I, I think as a way, when you look at the situation as a team, he actually is very unlikely to play this year because it's either, hey, we're going to go out and get a proven bat because we're contending and we need a hitter, or we're really bad, we're selling off, we're not going to start his clock early. So especially when you, we can get a draft pick if he is tearing up AAA and we wait till next year, you know? So I, th I think there's, I think in a weird way, he is very unlikely to play this year uh, until very late uh, because of, Hey, th th he could net us a draft pick as well as delaying service time or, you know, he's not proven. Or, we need proven. The third, the third option is they're playing well, but right field's a sore spot and he's playing well in AAA or whatever. And you bring him up and he's the missing piece. That's, part of the combination and that's what everybody hopes happens obviously but um i'm just saying i'm not saying i'm guaranteeing he's going to make the route or he's going to play this year in the majors but i'm kind of moving in towards the middle on that versus saying no there's no chance now i think there's some chance even if it's unlikely before i was pretty pretty hard stance like it's not going to happen but and there's more of a chance than i thought previously is kind of what i'm saying here and those other guys got to force their way to the majors too he he is in that discussion to at least force his way there because if their guys don't do it, he might. All right, we're going to talk about who we think the most common outfield combination is this year, who's going to be in the open day outfield, who's going to end the season in the outfield. We're going to try to get to some prospects, and we're going to hope we get to some draft, no draft guys today. as well. <laughs> Probably not. We might make that a bonus episode, some outfield draft guys all coming up. And our fantastic sponsor are the good friends over at Amazon fire tv we've been talking about the fact that you can now watch us on fire tv once the fire channels are going uh the nice thing is you can watch anything watch college basketball then i'm sure you can watch college baseball they say baseball so definitely college baseball you can talk about all the prospects that uh we won't get to in today's show but we will get to in the future Thanks. as we have a long time before now in the end of the year uh it's an amazing viewing experience for smart tvs or for your fire stick Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes us at Locked On and most big name pro leagues and college conferences. Fire TV channel lets you get game analysis, highlights, and more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire locked on fire tv all one word uh today one of those days i wish we could go a lot longer all right jeff we're gonna 
Let's got, do this. Let's talk about let's talk about the open day outfield first before we do this. Yeah. I was gonna um, say we got we got about eight minutes we can run. So I think right. prospects and and this is about yeah. where we got to go with who's, it. Who's your opening day starting outfield? Let's just say you don't have to say like the first day, game of the year. Let's just say who who is the most common outfield who I would season. like to see or who I expect it to be. Do both with with brevity. Right. <laughs> what I expect is Quan Lariano Brennan. What I'd like to see is Quan. Freeman, Loriano. I would like to see Quan Freeman, Brennan. I think that's a possibility. I think it'll probably be Quan. Quan, if they're facing a righty, it'll be Quan Floreal. And Loriano, if it's a righty, it'll be Quan, maybe Loriano, and then or yeah, I, and See, I think he's full time. Two. I don't think they gave him five million to be a backup. Or maybe but they're gonna work but they're gonna work other guys in they, they will but options. it'll be like once or twice a week i think he's gonna play five yeah. to seven five out of five games a week all right who is going to be the outfield come september who are gonna be a regular outfielders come september Quan, uh Quan <laughs> freeman brennan and by the end of the year that'll be your outfield yeah i think you know i i i have no faith in, in noel or rodriguez actually no. getting up and staying up I, I have no faith in Valera staying healthy. And for yeah. the reasons I discussed earlier, I just, I, I think the latter is still a bit of a long shot. So I think they're in a situation where, Hey, you got to see what you have in, in Freeman. You got to see what you have in Brennan. Um, I don't know if I believe that this team's going to be able to contend this year. So I kind of look at it as by the end of the year, it's going to be more the young players. That you got to try out. I would agree. I don't, I don't think Floria will last the season. So I think it's going to be Quan straw or Loriano and, and Brennan Shaw is still going to factor in the money's there. And I don't know, uh, most common. So who's going to play the three outfield spots the most often this year? Uh, well, I think it's, you know, Loriano and Quan are easy because your best guy and your guy is getting paid. Um, I, I think it'll probably be Brennan. Cause I think they do want to give him a good long look because they need to start figuring out. Where it ha- yeah. I mean, like I said, it's, it's either he makes it or he breaks it this year. So, mm-hmm. um, I think he gets opportunities to show so they know if they're going to stick with him or if, like I said, it's, he's a backup, he's a fourth outfield type and you just move on knowing that. Agreed. I think it's Quan, Loriano and Brennan get the most starts in the outfield this year. I think that's your most common combination because I don't think Freeman will play out center field every day. I think he'll still get reps in the infield. So I don't think he'll, he'll, he'll get some time out there to get him some at bats. Prospects of outfield prospects. This is a, what do they call that? Palind- palindrome? Pal- palindrome? You can, palindrome? It's the same. We, yeah. yeah. It's like Backwards and forwards. Yeah. I thought that was fun. Um, showing off my my uh, fourth grade phonics or whatever it is. We talked about Chase DeLauder. Uh We've talked a little bit about Valera, Noel, and Rodriguez. I don't see any of them impacting the roster this year, but that's a problem because this is Valera's last option year and I think Valera will make his debut this year just because they have to see him. Yes. But as far as the impact he makes, my hopes are kind of low at this point. The rest of the guys know. Noel, the thing, other thing with Noel, it's the same thing. He's got one option left. If he doesn't make his debut this year, then, you know, you're probably I do think, dumping him next year. I, I think Rodriguez gets a chance. I just, I don't have, I, I, you know, I've always been the little man on Noel from the beginning, and I've seen nothing to change that opinion. I know someone in the comments could be like, he's cut down on his K rate. It's not about the K, not rate. The K rate. rate. Yeah, it's cut down, but like, the problem with Noel is it's his contact is not good. So even when he does make contact, it's a lot of poor contact. So For I mean, I think Rodriguez nice gets power. a chance. I think, you know, he's, he's played well and performed well at every step. And I think, I know he hasn't looked great in the spring, but I think he's one of their few right-handed options. Um, I, I think he gets an opportunity this year at some point. Um, Valera will get a chance. Uh, after that, you know, we'll, we'll see um, beyond those guys. After that, it's PD Halpin and Jake Fox, who I like a lot. And then um, we'll talk about some other guys real quickly and before we run out of here. But Travis uh, Bazana, you know, outfielder. Travis Bazana. Outfielder. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying is like, obviously, there's Jason Churio, there's Cleo Watson, who people are excited about. Mm-hmm. We'll get some time in center field this year. We like El- with Fredo Antunez. Um, Tommy Hawk from last year might be a fourth outfielder, but, you know, I kind of like his game. I like Jose Perello from the DSL last year, and, and Robert Arias was their top. Uh, international signing from 2024. So those, those, all those guys are, are quite a few years off at this point. So the reason I put next up PD Halpin, Jake Fox, and then someone from the 24 draft is because 
if they were to draft an outfielder this year, then um, those guys, that guy would probably immediately pass any of them because yes. uh, those no, guys are far enough away. I mean, you and I were talking before the show, like uh, our, our former guest, Cole Mathis, who, you know, it's like, they, again, they played Oscar Gonzalez in the outfield, right? And he's having a down year. Um, maybe there's an injury or something going on. You never know beyond, you know, when you see a down year, that's what you kind of expect. But it's like, even if they took someone like him in the third, he might be the best outfielder after that in his group. Uh, and he's yeah. never played there. Um, yeah. And I and I like Halpin. I think he might be a fourth outfielder. And I like yeah. Fox. It's the same thing there. They're, they're kind of fourth outfield types. They get backup energy. Yeah. And then obviously Churio is a great prospect. I do, I do see him growing into his frame a little more. I really want to see what happens with Watson if he plays center field and if they can help him tap it. I mean, he was considered to be a one, one guy at one point that year. Yeah. In his draft. I mean, I, I would love to see him move to center field. I, I think that is, always, I think that is his, his best future outcome. I think it's a great place for him to get a second chance. So I agree. And then Antunez is really interesting. He's a big kid who can play center. He's got some interesting batted ball data. Yeah. Hawk kind of gives off fourth outfielder vibes, kind of gritty. Could be Miles Straw type. No one wants to hear that. But as long as you don't pay him $25 million, that's, you know, a good role player. Um, I don't know. And Jose Perella, again, was all DSL last year. And, and Robert Arias was just their their um, international signing from this year. So all those guys are are pretty far away. We didn't really have enough time. There's, I mean, we can quickly throw out some guys here like Condon, Bazana. There's Griffin. Could Kurtz play outfield? There's Seaver the King. Day. Yeah. yeah, we have the whole list scrolling down if you're watching Slade, on YouTube. Yeah, listen, Slade Caldwell is super fun. If he was bigger, I think he would be in the, you know, yeah, he, he'd have a chance to get there. I he, still want like, him at 36. I want Slade. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to get there, right though. I'll be honest. It, yeah. This this is a draft that peaks around 18. Uh, James Tibbs is, is is turning into my guy in this year's class. Um, I like him, uh, too. Dylan Drayling's my guy. dude. Yeah. Yeah, Dylan but, Drayling yeah, is hitting lefties better this year, so he's exciting. And then, uh, yeah, Jared Thomas. Zach Stewart was kind of a late name I had us throw on there. Who's having a really good year at Missouri State, home of Jake Berger. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of fun names. We'll we'll talk about all these guys throughout. But uh, thank you for joining us. Remember to rate and review. Download every day. Be in every day. Or, like David Real over quickly, in England, who always before we get a, there, a kind word. Before yes. we get out of here, we're going to do position previews later in the week. Tomorrow, we're going to do our final. We're finally going to do our second annual uh, Guardians prospect draft. So look for that tomorrow. But let us know in the comments what position preview you want to do do next. We did shortstop catch. We've done outfield. So we still have first base, second base, third base, starting pitching, and relief pitching. Let us know what position you want us to do next. And as always, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you being part of the Lockdown Guardians family. Again, do your part. Check it out every day. And go, go, go.